I want to share some things that I learned about options. In particular, I want to share about option terminologies and option payoff. Now, as far as I know, there are two options, American and European. In an American option, the contract can be executed before the expiration. However, in a European option, the contract is executed at expiration. In this video, we will assume that the option that we're talking here is a European option. With that in mind, let's start by defining the two types of contracts in an option. There's the call option and the put option. The call option is the right to buy stock at price K. And the put option is the right to sell the stock at price K. Both for put and call options, you can either long or short. So let's start with an example of long call. So what does it mean to long call? Well, we said earlier that a call option is the right to buy stock at strike price K. So if you long a call, this means that you're holding on to the right to buy the stock at strike price K. Let me give you an example. Let's say that we have a call option with strike price K equals to $50 and trading at C equal to $10. On the horizontal axis, we'll graph the price of the stock. And here is the strike price, $50. If we move to the right, then the stock price increases, for example, to 70 and to 90. And if we move to the left, it decreases all the way down to $0. On the vertical axis, we'll graph the profit and loss for holding on to this call option. We're writing the payoff diagram for a long call. If you long a call, then you pay this $10 to hold on to this right to buy the stock price at strike price K. So initially you put in $10. So our initial profit loss will be whatever we pay to hold on to this call option. In this example, we said that it is equal to $10. Now let's consider what happens at expiration. Let's say that the price of stock is less than $50 which is the strike price. For example, let's say that on the market, the stock price is $30. Then we wouldn't exercise this call option. On the market, we can buy this stock price at $30, so we don't want to exercise this right to buy it at $50. Why buy it at $50 when we can buy it at $30? We don't exercise this option, so up until $50, our profit and loss is minus C, whatever we pay, minus $10. Okay, let's consider another situation. What happens if at expiration the stock price is over K? If the stock price at expiration is above the strike price K, then we will exercise this contract, buy the stock at $50, and then sell it on the market for over $50 to make a profit. So in this example, we will exercise the option if the stock price at expiration is at or above the strike price K. And we will make a profit if the stock price at expiration is above K plus whatever we paid initially, $10. So at $60, if the stock price is over $60, then we will make a profit. So this is a long call. Next, let's take a look at a short call. What is a short call? This is also called writing a call and also called selling a call. And it means that whoever is writing a call must sell the stock at strike price K. Scoring back up, if you are long call, then you have the right to buy stock at strike price K. Well, let's say that someone is long call. They have the right to buy stock at strike price K. Then this also means that we need someone on the opposite side of this trade. Someone that is willing to sell the stock price at strike price K. This person will be shorting a call. They would sell the stock price at strike price K. Let's take a look at an example. Again, for this example, we'll say that there is a call option with strike price K equals $50, trading at C equals $10. Okay, here's the graph that we'll be using again. On the horizontal axis, we'll map out stock price. And on the vertical axis, we'll map out the profit and loss, the payoff diagram for this short call. Initially, the writer of the call option will receive the trading fee of $10 from the person who is long call. The person who is long call pays to the call option writer $10. So this person starts out with a profit of $10. If the stock price at expiration is below the strike price K, then as we saw earlier, the person of long call will not exercise their option. So this means that the call option writer does not have to sell his stock at strike price K. However, let's say that the stock price is at strike price K at expiration. Then we know from the payoff diagram of long call 
that the person who is on call will exercise his contract. This means that this person, the writer, must sell the stock price at strike price K. If the stock price at expiration is exactly K, then he does not lose any money. However, let's say that the stock price at expiration is $60, then the call option writer will lose $10. On the open market, it is selling for $60, but he must sell it for $50. So that is why he is losing $10. And if the stock price at expiration, let's say is $70, then the call option writer will lose $20. So a call option writer will make profit if the stock price at expiration is below the strike price K. If the stock price at expiration is above K plus C, then the call option writer will be at a loss. Okay, let's move on to long and short puts. What is long put? It's also called buy put. Long put is the right to sell the stock price at strike price K. So if you're a long put, then you have the right to sell the stock price at strike price K. Let's say that we have a put option with strike price K equals $50 trading at P equals $10. Let's write out the payoff diagram for the long put. Let's say that the stock price at expiration is $0. Then the long put can sell the stock for $50 or K, so they will get $50. However, initially they paid $10 to purchase this contract, so the profit that they will make is K minus P. The amount that they were able to sell the stock price for minus the initial amount that they paid into. This is K minus P. Let's consider another case. What happens if at expiration, the stock price is equal to K? Well, if the stock price is equal to K, then they have the right to sell the stock price exactly at the strike price K. However, since they paid the $10 of trading fee, at this point, they will be at minus $10. And if the stock price at expiration is above the strike price K, then they wouldn't exercise this right. On the market, they can sell this stock price for over the strike price K. So they wouldn't exercise this contract. So if the stock price at expiration is above the strike price K, then the long put would have lost $10 of the trading fee. Okay, let's look at short put. What is a short put? It's also called write put and sell put. Short put or the writer of the put option must buy the stock at strike price K. So scrolling back up, if you're a long put, then you have the right to sell stock at strike price K. We need someone on the other side to honor this agreement. Someone that is willing to buy the stock at strike price K. So this is short put. Let's take a look at an example. Again, let's say that there is a put option with strike price K equals $50, trading at P equals $10. We will map out the payoff diagram here. Let's consider the case when the stock price is $0 at expiration. If it's $0, then the writer of put option must still buy this stock at strike price K, which is equal to 50. Initially, the writer of put option received $10, so the profit loss will be, the loss will be minus K dollars, and the profit will be plus P dollars. Combine these two together, and this is the profit loss. If the stock price at expiration is $0, if the stock price at expiration is exactly equal to the strike price, then on the market they can buy this stock at $50, and the strike price is also $50. However, the writer of this put option received $10 for the trading fee, so their profit will be $10. And let's also consider the case if the stock price at expiration is above the strike price K. Then the long put will not exercise the contract, since the long put can sell the stock above the strike price K, so they wouldn't exercise their long put option. The option is not exercised, so the short put will not have to buy the stock price at strike price K. The contract will not be exercised, so at the end the short put will have a profit of the trading fee P.